Yes, it's me, Dr. Kristen John, and I'm really happy again to be able to collaborate with Ask the Doctor series to talk to you on a topic called diabetes and exercise. And yeah, the two do go together. I'll show you how. I am Dr. Kristen John. I am a registered physical therapist who really enjoys allowing you, the public, to make better decisions so that you could live a better quality life. Have you ever heard someone say, I think I got sugar, he got sugar, we got sugar, a whole family got sugar? Well, the sugar they're talking about is diabetes. So what is diabetes really? It's a very common, unfortunately, disorder in which the body is unable to regulate sugar or glucose. So anytime in this presentation, you hear me use the fancy word glucose, I'm really talking about sugar, okay? Now, I want you to understand that when we eat food, it has to be broken down into, um, um, into a way that the body can use it to provide energy for us to breathe, to move, to think, all of these activities. And that comes from the glucose. Now, sometimes we eat too much sugar and i understand because i love chocolate and i can eat a whole bowl of it but with all the things there must always be balance and that is what i'm here today to sort of allow us to just remind us that there needs to be balance if we want to have a better grip of diabetes it is one of the most common non-communicable diseases and lots of money is spent and there's a lot of burden on our healthcare services each year simply because of diabetes. And there are free methods, exercise being one, that we could utilize each and every day so that we could allow our globe, our world to be healthier. There are three different types. Type one, which can affect kids. Yup, your babies can have it. They can simply be born with it due to genetics or, you know, the DNA per se. Or, um, and also I should say, there has to be insulin dependent, which is a drug that is normally administered via an injection. Why would we want to put our kids through that, right? So what, if we could avoid it, we can. If we can't, we learn to live with it, okay? So there's also type two, which is the most popular type. And fortunately, that usually doesn't require the need for you to have insulin. You know, doing certain activities such as eating well and exercise helps a whole lot. And then there's gestational diabetes, which affects pregnant women. And I want you to understand if you've never been a diab diabetic before in your life, but throughout your pregnancy, you were diagnosed your chances improve significantly. So mummies to be, congratulations. But we cannot eat every and anything as if we don't have a care in the wood. We have to ensure that we stay healthy for our babies and also for ourselves, okay? So what are some of the common signs and symptoms? There is a whole heap, but I put together some very common ones that we see our patients, you know, talking about the most. Increased thirst and hunger. You just eat, you won't eat again. You just drink some water, you won't water again. Increased urination. Could I give you a little TMI also? I think they mean that too much information, right? If you look through your dirty laundry basket and you notice your underwear has ants on it, you need to be tested for diabetes immediately. If you're looking, if you know you're taking really good care of your hygiene and you're scrubbing your skin really well um, when you bathe, but you notice a dark line, almost like your skin, your, your neck is never being scrubbed well, you need to get screened for diabetes immediately. If you're losing weight and you're not even trying, you haven't made any changes to your diet, you're not exercising more, you don't feel stressed, why am I losing weight? You need to be checked for diabetes. Sometimes persons would observe that they have a wound or a cut and it's just not healing. Why would this cut that would normally heal in two, week, um, two days taking two weeks to two months? You should check your healthcare provider. Or sometimes you feel really tired. 
blurred vision is also one of those signs. Now, note self, a blurry vision is sometimes not related to diabetes, but you should still check it out with your healthcare provider. Even though diabetes is very common within today's society, that doesn't mean that its impact is no less disastrous. It can affect every body part every and i'm not even being dramatic about it it could affect your limbs you could have an amputation meaning that you have to have that part of your body removed because it's not healing well or sometimes it affects the blood flow and therefore the leg needs to be removed the toes need to be removed or the fingers need to be removed and we want to avoid that as much as possible um, sometimes it could permanently cause blindness yeah. <laughs> It could also increase our risk for heart attacks and also increase our chances of having foot deformities. It can increase our chances for um, having kidney diseases. If we can prevent this, why not? This is so stressful and many people are going through this every day. But if we could avoid it, why not? And that's what I'm here today to help you do. So normally, when a person has... Um, been diagnosed by their physician with diabetes, it's a whole life shift. They have to make changes to their diet. They have to eat foods that are low in saturated fat. And sometimes, you know, our taste buds get very accustomed to those delicious, juicy, fatty foods, but it's not good for diabetics. So if you're a diabetic, I hope that you are speaking or consulting with your dietitian because diet management is super important to being a healthy diabetic. Also medications. This, of course, has to be according to the recommendations of your physician. They will determine if you need insulin or any sort of glucose regulated medications. As a as, as an aside, lots of persons as their glucose numbers gets a lot better usually between you know 70 to 120 for very healthy persons they tend to stop take the medications but i want to remind you that you should not stop taking medications unless your doctor advises that it is time to do so okay now exercise so this is the area that i that i enjoy um speaking about the most so aerobic and resistance training, when I say aerobic, I mean like walking, jogging, running, and when I say resistance, I mean using therabands, um, going to the gym and actually lifting weights or using um, things around your home if you can't afford to go to a gym because that's some of our reality or you just probably don't feel safe in a gym because of COVID. I don't know how people exercise a mask, so I currently exercise at home right so you could use um gallons of water bottles etc and that could be your resistance training or find a block around your home and use that as a form of resistance training but all these things come together to allow a person to uh, manage your diabetes a lot better now what i want to focus in on today is exercise and why exercise why are you talking about exercise versus the medications the medications do it all not really. The exercise, the research has shown us that exercise is really superior at allowing for us to have better control of glucose levels. It also improves our muscular strength and tolerance. Now, remember I said diabetes could affect your circulation or your blood flow in your legs. When you exercise, there's now going to be formation of new blood vessels if you continue this for a prolonged period of time. So it really helps with circulation. That's added benefits that sometimes medications don't do. All right. Now, it also prevents and treats diabetes related disability. A lot of persons with diabetes, for varying reasons, their nerves become attacked. Remember, I said it affects every part of your system. It affects your nerves. So sometimes because you are strengthened and because you are doing these exercises, the impact of these diseases or these disorders are minimized. And the best part of the whole reason why exercise is a key strategy to management of diabetes, even if you have it or if you don't have it, is that it decreases death rates in men and women. Or said in another way, it improves your life expectancy or how long you're going to live. Who wouldn't want to take part in that? And this is free. 
We all can do it. A person that is seated in a chair can exercise. Sit in front of your on in front of YouTube and find out seated exercises. A person who is um physically challenged, mentally um challenged, any of that sort everyone can exercise once you're doing physical activity and you're moving and you, it's a bit difficult to have a conversation that's the zone we want you in it can help manage your diabetes so i want you to understand that if you're if you're a diabetic this part of the presentation is for you there are certain guidelines that is very key yes everyone could exercise but as a diabetic because your system operates differently we have to ensure it's done safely so do not exercise if your glucose levels are above a hundred, um, a less sorry, less than one hundred, or more than two fifty. Okay, that's very important. Um, and that was an error there. The less than sign is supposed to be the opposite way. Also, indoor exercise is preferred with proper footwear. As a diabetic, it's key that you inspect your legs every day with a mirror because of the poor or the slow healing of wounds that increases our chances of having the legs removed or having an amputation. For persons who take insulin, never exercise at the peak times of insulin. So usually your doctor would recommend at least two hours after um, just to ensure that it's within a safe time zone and the medication is doing what it has to do so that you feel protected. This is the number one takeaway and this is not just for exercise. If you're leaving your house, always have a carbohydrate snack at every session and always stay hydrated. This is key to ensure that you do not end up with any complications that will warrant any form of hospitalization. So always walk with a bottle of water, always walk with um, a, um, some persons they walk with a mint, anything that the body could digest quite easily. Some persons they walk with a very small sandwich, a cheese sandwich along that line okay um i also would just like to advise persons you know if you're exercising it's best if you exercise with someone because sometimes our diabetics run into complications okay we call it like a hypoglycemic um episode where and it's and i mean you may not even be aware that it's happening but they start to cold sweat they become a bit delirious they could faint and pass out so it's best to exercise with company but if you know because life happens you cannot or your time frame doesn't work with your friends or your family ensure that you exercise with a medical tag with emergency information set that says you're a diabetic what medications in your hand who is your next of kin and your emergency contact information this could literally save the life of yourself or a loved one so as a physical therapist we encourage movement because we know movement heals and we know that in addition to all the other um, medication and interventions that your doctor recommends exercise is key the research backs us up with that so we want to ensure that at least an accumulation of 150 minutes per week with exercise of moderate intensity right some persons could tolerate vigorous but that depends on after your physical therapist or your doctor sees you and they say hey yeah you know you're safe to go in the vigorous zone that's fine but what i tell my patients is you shouldn't feel like you should be able to be on facetime or be on your whatsapp call and have a conversation when you're exercising you should feel a bit breathless doing it okay brisk walking or jogging is optimal especially with resistance training i tell my diabetics listen walking is your friend get yourself some great footwear that supports you make sure that you inspect it every before and after and you want to ensure also that you walk on surfaces such as a field or sand but you know if you don't have a choice then it's fine to utilize the, the sidewalk okay but just get moving and do it safely so if you have any additional questions, there's a wonderful, reputable website called www.diabeteseducator.org. Feel free to go there and divulge for further information or see your physician. See you soon.